are you? Are you like excited to be here? Are you guys excited? Very. <laughs> you don't look it. Anyway, I'm just gonna do something with you so that you look a little bit used up, right? I'm gonna say, um, women rise and then, uh, okay, fine. Who are keen on learning a, a, a new word today? Perfect. It's gonna be a develop word. So when I say women rise, and then you guys, you do the siavuma, right? Okay, okay yeah. fine. You, you don't have to do this now. You don't want to. <laughs> so all you have to do is siavuma. Women rise, siavuma. Women um, share experiences, siavuma. Women, um, uh, women embrace who they are, siavuma, right? So it's gonna be like those three, right? With so much oomph, so much power. So then we get started, is it? Right? Uh -huh. Okay. One, two, three. Women rise. Siahuma. No, guys, you're not doing it right. Women rise. Siahuma. These guys are not doing it right. Guys, guys. women rise. Siahuma. Women share experiences. Siahuma. Women embrace who they are. Siahuma. Oh, yes. Welcome to Women Wine and Words. I hope you guys have so much fun. And please do utilize your uh, digital phones. Take pictures. Spread the word and tell everyone, tell everyone that we are here. Also remember that you guys as the audience, you do have the audacity to probably like interrupt us when we're chatting and you've got certain questions that we are, that you want to ask. And the main topic that we're going to be talking about today, it's called the politics of hair. Uh, how many of you love that topic? Hello. <laughs> and how many of you are so keen to probably like learn and discover certain things that you didn't know about your hair? absolutely amazing so you guys i do certainly hope that you're going to cooperate so my name is deborah shabangana uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an assistant to stephanie on this project uh deborah shabangana is a young media professional who is super keen on uh you know wanting to tell a, a different african story uh, through digital content creation i also love coffee so much i'm a fashion designer i'm pretty sure you can see with 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 what I'm I'm wearing, half of it is like DIY, and then um, I also uh, like doing social media management and social media uh, coordinating. And on the panel, we do have gorgeous, beautiful women who are from different walks of lives, and I'm going to ask them to uh, pre to actually like uh, represent them to present themselves and. Um, at this particular moment so ladies hi you are the more energetic actually and hey. guys can you please give them a big round of applause yes so you it. yeah so you guys can yeah, go ahead and, and uh introduce yourself i'm jenny peterson i am the owner of kinky curly natural hair salon in mount pleasant um i am half danish half zimbabwean i've been here now for four years full time um, I also run an audiology clinic out of the Bordel Trauma Center. I am a doctor of audiology. And i um, just very enthusiastic about natural hair, and holistic natural practices, nature-based practices. Um, and I think it's just important to, yeah, embrace all things natural. <laughs> and um, I guess that's why I'm here with this panel. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Butterfly. I'm a radio presenter. I'm also a TV presenter. Uh, I'm also like a producer. I produce shows on radio. And I'm also a content creator. Hey! And uh, I'm also... Sha, she had a lot, Sha. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to manage. Oh, oh. All right, fine. That's, that's, that's all I got for now. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Pamela Nyanburo. I am a um, media and communication specialist. But by choice, I am fashion hair enthusiast. Um, here with my um, friend, we are part of a talk show called Room for Doubt. Um, we basically talk about issues that we face as Zimbabwean youth. And yeah, I guess I'm here mainly because I did a series after I cut my hair. So yeah, that's the highlight of my life. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Yatina. I am a research and development consultant. Um, I also dabble in social media management. Um, I, I absolutely 
love uh, fashion, everything DIY hair, DIY skin care products. And uh, I'm so excited to be part of the panel today. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, and yeah, I guess we're gonna get into it very shortly. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ayati with an I, I-Y-A-T-I. -I. I'm a communications practitioner. I work for Star FM, the biggest and the best radio station in Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> I recently discovered that my life is a thing. My life is a phenomenon. I had no idea. I just believe that less is more. I eat right, I exercise, I party, I love things. And I realized that it, it's, it's, it's a concept, it's something a lot of people are trying to learn, but this is how I've been living my life. So um, I've recently taken a turn in my life where I am stepping out of my comfort zone. I am a radio presenter by uh, um, um, nature, <laughs> by choice. Uh, and um, you know, when you, when you work on radio, it's a very small space. So I'm, I'm trying to come out into the larger space, social media, and starting a blog and just, you know, rediscovering, uh, you know, other things or rather discovering other things and exploring other things. So, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here. This is uh, one of the earliest st steps to this uh, journey of discovery. I'm really excited. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Those were great introductions. But anyway, um, uh, just to remind you again, hashtag the politics of hair. That's why those beautiful ladies are here and we're going to dig deeper into that. So first off, um, when I think the politics of hair, to me it's like the general uh, perception of hair, um, depending on which setting, professional or personal, you know, and it also goes deeper into hair and gender, hair and um, natural hair versus the weave and all that stuff for you i would like to find out when we say the politics of hair what's your understanding of that you can answer that randomly anybody is ready to take it on all right i'll start when i hear the politics of hair i think that um there is one uh viewpoint mm -hmm. which is trying which is, is being imposed somehow on at the viewpoints. I mean, there are all types of hair. There are all types of people. And that's just how hair should be. But it's become political because there's one type of hair or a certain type of hair or a certain type of look which apparently supersedes all other types. And I think that's what every day we battle with and that's how it becomes political. So I would say when I think of the politics of hair, um, actually, when you said, okay, fine, this is what we're going to be talking about, I thought immediately what came to my mind is how there is a specific kind of uh, way to wear your hair when you're in a professional setting. And then there's a specific kind of way. You know how people label people when they say, uh, when you see someone with uh, gray braids or something long, maybe something you're like the way you're wearing your hair. And immediately they'll be like, oh, okay, you know, she she is maybe Mascano Mafaro or something like that. And then um, I, remember, I remember watching a documentary where there was this black lady and she was talking about how she was told to wear her hair in a more professional way at work. And this was when she was wearing her hair naturally in an afro, just like you're wearing your hair. And she was told that's not professional. And I think that touches a spot for all of us because we've all been to a point where you're like, I don't know what to do with my hair. I'm just gonna let it do what it wants today. And because we, th there are certain settings where there's a right way or a certain way to wear your hair that's acceptable. Um, that's what came to mind when I thought of the politics of hair and also just the other struggles that come with it. Um, how you style your hair, how much it costs, how your income um, dictates that, um, how people view you because of how you choose to wear your hair. Um, I'm not going to hog the mic, but just the other day, <laughs> just the other day, you know, I was in town and someone is like, ah, Sister Munemari, which is a translation into, wow, you have lots of money. And I actually said to this lady, um, a jar of ducks is like, three dollars things have gone up so three five bucks and a tail comb that's really all it takes and then a packet of braids is a dollar so what do you mean 
Um, so I've, I've noticed like hair is something people use to judge others and kind of put you in a box or a category when they don't know how else to sum you up. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, I think I just have a story as my response to this, but um, with me, I've worked in very professional settings. I've worked in agencies and weirdly enough, my hair is always how I am judged. I think I cut my hair, I used to wear it out, or wear head wraps. Um, I think maybe the people who know me know that I love head wraps. And at one point, my boss stopped me and she was like, I see what I'm scattering bungee. And I'm like, how is that the classification? When you see me wearing head wraps a lot, already I am thrown into a category of weed smokers. <laughs> But I'm just saying <laughs> that that's the category I was thrown into. So like what Yatina was saying, that um, if you look a certain way, you get thrown into a certain box. As much as we don't want that to exist, it does. And the classification is usually with black women. Because to be honest, we have the most diverse hair. I think if you look at hair types, you, you like, I remember I was shocked. I was like, oh, my hair is this, oh, there's four C, there's four white. I didn't even know that. And there's certain ways to take care of your hair. And I love the whole politics of hair because that shows that there's certain classifications of hair. And I think that makes us all the more beautiful, that our hair is different. And that is part of our identity to some extent. All right. Um... <clears throat> So, um, when when we were growing up, if you had like, you know, the, the silky hair, you know, you got relax on and all that, that was like cool back in the day. And you kind of had to have that. And I remember our parents around grade four, you'd be allowed to get your, your hair relaxed and, and all of that stuff. And then also growing up, you know, even in our work setting, like all these girls are talking about Peru uh, Brazilians and Peruvians and, and all of that stuff. And it's been like that for the past, you know, a very long time. And then I've just re recently realized that I think about two years back or maybe this year, there's also another judgment that has come into play. Like, why is your hair not natural? You know, you also get people who give you grief for that. Like, why are you relaxing your hair? Why aren't you keeping your hair the way that it was intended? You know, so I think hair is very political in that. There's always like a side of people that are like, your hair should be all silky and smooth. And, and then there are also people that are like, your hair should be the way it came out of your you know like when you came out of your mother that's how your hair should be and you know so i guess it's political in that i don't know which side i'm on because i embrace creativity i don't really mind but yeah that's that's my um not much to add um what i will say though is what i've noticed um in terms of our criteria for what looks smart and what's proper and the people who actually impose um, those standards on other people are black women. Have you noticed? So my mom was like, I'm sorry, you what? <laughs> You're going natural. You work in a, in a massive corporation. And at the time I was living in Denmark. And she's like, I always told you, you're, you're a woman and you're black. You're going to need to work twice as hard for the same things. And now you want to rock up in there looking like this, <laughs> like I didn't raise you properly. Um, and I find it's and it's in it's not only with heads, it's you know, it's genital mutilation it's everything who is keeping on imposing these things on us It's our own um, And that's actually interesting But what I, I will say is with this movement that has been going on where it's okay to wear your hair that the way that it grows out of your head um, The older generations are also getting into it now And I think we kind of needed that move to happen for it to be more accepted um, because actually if you are in a white, predominantly white workplace, yeah, they want to touch it and they want to, but they're not going to, you know, stop you from doing a presentation in front of the board. They're not going to, um, the ones that will actually limit you is ourselves. And I just thought that was a little interest caveat to add to it. Thank you so much. What I've picked from all of you is you brought in the stereotypes. You also brought in this, uh, the settings, professional setting whereby if you have your mabanzis, everyone is looking at you in a funny way and they think like, are you really serious? And actually from uh, what I've read, uh, what I read, uh, there's actually a high rate whereby if you are going for an interview, I have got probably my looks or natural hair and you've got like the silky hair. There are more chances that you with the silky hair, you're going to get the job and me with the rough, you know, funky type of hairstyle, they won't take me seriously. So um, I know you also mentioned the, the issue of the body, the... Look at me. <laughs> the 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 
natural hair movement, which is something that has been big on social media. We are getting onto that. But right now, I would like to just let's hammer on these stereotypes and these misconceptions. I mean, who defines professional? Like, d does, does that not take away from who I am? If I want to present myself like butterfly, even at a corporate place, can I just be myself and just, can, can the job be done with me having that type of hairstyle? I mean, let's just hammer on that. Anybody would like to just, even the, you guys, if you have anything, if you want to interrupt us during the conversation, you can just raise your hand, there is a mic, that will just move around. Yeah. Um, so in the professional setting, like I like what Ms. Peterson over here said that you know what, it's you, it's our own that judges. And I worked in a workplace that way. If my hair was out curly, I think I'd wear it like that. I was like, that's what my hair looks like. That or nasty. So that's how I'm going to wear it. And she would be like, oh, we have a meeting. Um, that's a bit unacceptable. And this is coming from a black woman who is wearing. Um, Brazilian hair and I'm like I don't mind you can do whatever you want and I continued I was so adamant I was like you know what this is my hair and I continued doing that to the point that she cut her hair and she started wearing her hair out like that and I was like okay so at least she understands so it might not have been something that I was like you know what I'm changing a hundred lives but I was able to convince my superior that it's okay um, I can wear my hair straight, I can wear a weave, I can wear a wig, I can wear braids. But the thing is, as a black woman, women, I think we have so much that we can do with our hair. So much. And there's no need for us to now limit ourselves. As women, actually. But more so black women. There's a bit of a bias. I apologize. But um, there's more that we can do with our hair. And there's no need for us to now squeeze each other into a box. And be like, this is acceptable, this isn't because we pass on these um, these misconceptions. And then in the end, I'll be thinking, I can't wear an afro to work. I'm gonna pass that to, on to my child and it's just going to keep moving and moving. And that's the mentality we're going to have. So now what I really like is, I think um, you mentioned social media. People have taken to social media and they're like, oh, I'm going to wear my hair like this. Oh, I got harassed at work, they said this. People are much more open. And I think what was um, what's crucial is we're finally having conversations about natural hair we never used to that is the truth we never used to you know those like those books that you flip in like at like at salons with the sleek hair very few styles were like natural and what i like now is the, the acceptance of natural hair um i saw something very interesting the other day on uh instagram and uh, a friend of mine posted uh, an advert by Olive Oil. I don't know how many of you know Olive Oil in the green box. They make hair products. And one of their products is Relaxer. And in, the, in that particular advert for the Relaxer, they showed a woman with a tail comb. And she was trying so hard to comb her hair. And the comb wouldn't go through until the comb broke. And that was part of the advert. And they were like... Why go through the stress? Why, when you can relax your hair and have straight, silky hair and have things be convenient for you? Um, I think one of the biggest lies that we have been sold is that our hair as black women is inconvenient. That all the time and the effort we put into it, um, all the love we give our manes, all the products we need to use, the moisture, everything that we need to put in our hair to keep it healthy, is inconvenient um for me personally i think that is very sad and it's one of the biggest lies um and just like miss peterson was saying it is other black women that impose all of this because you're never you're you're never gonna find uh you know a caucasian lady um, they might be very interested in your hair, but they're not going to be like, wow, that is like, so how long do you take? Okay, that's wow. Why don't you just relax it? It's usually other black women. And, uh, you know, it happens. It's not just with hair, but it's with other things that come into play as a young black woman. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard uh, people saying, you know, the gatekeepers of patriarchy are other women. And that's, that's one of the, I think that's probably one of the 
strongholds that we need to bring down. It's uh, one of these barriers that we keep putting up as black women um, for other black women. And for me, it's, it's just really baffling. Um, yeah. Yes, um, like you've all been saying that um, it, it's all perpetuated by other black women, these stereotypes. Um, I'll share two experiences when two of my previous jobs, um, that's when I, 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 I had to stop and realize that I was doing something different. I thought I was just being me, like uh, Jen says, just wear your hair the way it grows out of your head because you know that's, that's how it is. And in as much as Caucasian hair to us from a distance may look the same. It's definitely not the same. Each woman is different. They all have different curl types or different uh, density or the, 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 you know, how, how straight it is. It's all very different. And, um, it, but because we are looking at it collectively from the outside, we all think, but in, in those other um, ethnicity types, there are many different uh, uh, hair types. I mean, there's the jet black of the, of the Asian hair, uh, you know, it, it's all very, very different. And as individual women, they are all very different. And like Pam, I like what Pam says, it's part of our identity. That diversity is part of our identity. And the fact that my own hair with shrinkage, being as real as it is, makes me a different person every day. I mean, it gives me a different feel every day. And I just have to go with that. And like um, uh, Yatina just said that, you know, all the time and love we spend on our hair is totally worth it because that's what our hair demands. And I think we're given that hair for a reason. It's, it's meant to shape our lives and our viewpoints and how, how we take care of ourselves. So um, surprisingly, my first radio job, um, I mean, being as old as I am, was obviously with the national broadcaster uh, way back then, some eh, almost 20 years ago, I'm proud to say. Um, and at that time, uh, that's the, the time I started doing head wraps because I just came out of, I just come out of high school and I realized, you know what, all the things Sunday Shingirira in high school are never going to happen. I can't relax my hair. I just don't have enough of it. I don't have enough body. It doesn't hold the chemicals well. And I just look like a cat, a wet cat. And, you know, there's no point. So I was just coming into my own as a young woman, as a young adult, and uh, realizing who I am and, 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 and solidifying my identity. So now I'm working. I've got a choice. And I'm in a creative field. But, you know, the national broadcaster, in as much as it's a creative field, has some sort of, you know, strongholds and, and traditional mindsets. So I remember my boss um, being sent to talk to me by a group of elderly women, you know, much older women, to say, go and find out if she's okay. I don't know if uh, 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 many of you in the audience or even here up here will remember a, a, a former um, TV news reader called Mar Marilyn Mambi. She used to like head wraps. Way back then, it was so unorthodox, but she, she stuck to a head wrap. And there were all sorts of rumors abound about why she had that head wrap. I then got to learn her personal story, which I'm not really at liberty to share right now, but it, it was a difficult um, uh, lifestyle, and you know she had her own reasons, and she had to uh, have the head wrap all the time. So I think people in that setting then associated the head wrap with people with a difficult life, difficult circumstances. So that's why they sent you know, my boss as a concerned a group of people to say, is she okay? Is she okay? Like, why would you want to confine yourself and, and tie your hair? Um, the next time was a couple of years later, uh, almost 15 years forward, I was working for a large corporate, a vehicle uh, um, manufacturing and, and selling company. And uh, I interviewed with the head rep. I, I know that the... the, the the, 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 how the odds are stacked against you when you turn up at, a, at an interview like that, like what you said earlier, uh, Debs, that the one with the straight hair uh, has more chances of getting the job. So I turned up with my head wrap and I got the job. So I thought, hmm, okay, someone is open-minded in this panel. They don't mind. But uh, three weeks into the job, again, a, a delegation was sent to talk to me. Um... I explained to the delegation that it was just preference and I had other factors that were affecting this decision and I didn't see anything wrong with it. I remember posing the question, were I Muslim? And I had to wear, like, would anyone be questioning this? But because, you know, I'm 
the same color as you and I speak the same language as you, you want to question my, my choices of how I wear my hair? And they said, it's not professional. I then challenged it and say, where in the code of conduct is it written that I cannot? It's actually silent. So the choice is mine to make. So those, were the, 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 those are the dynamics that I faced in the, in the uh, professional world. I went back to radio, thank goodness. And um, now nobody flinches. I've, I've, I've worn a head wrap for the first uh, years in my current job. I then had the, the big shave and I wore my, my bald head very proudly and it, it became quite a statement such that, <laughs> thank you, such that a lot of people are actually right now are having problems identifying me because you know the head wrap had become quite a signature, uh, the, the bald head had become quite a signature. So yeah, those are the dynamics we face. But like uh, has been established around this panel, the conversation has started and definitely it will never be the same again and we have to continue this dialogue and we have to keep engaging yeah without uh, brow beating people on our uh, pre uh, preferences uh, like uh, um, like you said uh, uh, there are those that choose otherwise and there are those that choose the other way and it should all be okay what is important is to be informed what is important is to be an independent thinker and come to an individual choice that matches who you are, what you can afford. There's the issue of affordability. There's the issue of, you know, what, what's doable to you in the season that you're in. And it also happens in seasons. Maybe one day I'll wake up and I'll have, you know, I'm currently working, working on regrowing my hair, by the way. Maybe I'll wake up with, you know, enough thickness to want to be able to try a relaxer. Who should stop me or who should judge me for that and why should they? So I'm glad that these conversations are happening. And when I look at you ladies, I am so envious because when I was your age, when you know, when, you know, when high school and just as a fresh out of high school, you could not dare talk about these things. So the, the environment is definitely changing. The landscape is, is very, very open. It's, it's a time for us to, to, to color the landscape and we are doing that very well. Kudos to us all. Thank you so much. Uh, so I, I figure that each and every hairstyle, each and every person has a hair story. And it's either emotional or it's got some, there are things going on in there. And this is just absolutely amazing. I'm feeling challenged and I'm learning as I go. You guys, are you learning? Yeah. <laughs> just to give you an example, Ayati, uh, I remember Yuma Segela, the late Yuma Segela came to Star FM and I remember he never wanted to hug anybody with weaves or any other extensions. He wanted to take pictures with only females that had natural hair. Um, I mean, also another example, South African students have been protesting. They've been told at schools, uh, for example, that was Pretoria Girls High. They were told to go fix their hair. That was the cornrows, the, the locks, them wearing their frows and all that stuff. It was considered inappropriate at school. Uh, also, I think in the same year when that happened, Port Elizabeth, Cape Town as well, there were also other um, schools that say to students, uh, you might not be able to actually sit for your exam because you, because of your afro. So you need to make sure that your hair is like put up in a certain way. I mean, w why why does our hair carry all these struggles? Why <laughs> why is it being stigmatized? I mean, and when 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 is this going to end, or how are we going to detain this? You have. Okay.
<laughs> it's blonde and when I said I was gonna do it everyone was like you're gonna lose your job how why would you risk it why are you trying to be a hippie like is this your new friends like I mean it became a Where's whole thing <laughs> I, I feel offended yeah, team, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> yeah you know, it became a whole thing and then once I did diet we had a big event at work and my boss actually flew down and he's like wow this is really bright you're preparing for summer he was happy he's a white dude he doesn't care he's like where are my numbers where's my money where's my cash that's all that matters and i think with the corporate world in particular if we can start to reframe it and base it on kind of um kind of a quantitative measure instead of qualitative of your identity your persona who you are i should not look at you and say oh no it's like discrimination essentially if you're in a wheelchair oh you can't do this no let me do it if i can't reach my kpis then fire me and i think that's just how it is with hair hair is this thing that we are trying to measure our potential based on what our hair looks like so in my mind you cannot do a quadratic equation why would you can draw cool that's fine then someone with braids yeah maybe she works in accounting these boxes are boxes that we have created as a society these are boxes that maybe not even i created that someone told me and you know as culture grows it's passed on it's things that you're told from when you're younger it's hairstyles you've had since you were a little kid i mean my my sister still likes her hair but i, I couldn't understand why my hair didn't grow the same way hers did her hair is up to her butt for these days mine's like struggle like edges and stuff you know but once i started reading up on this natural hair journey i'm like wait a minute we just have different hair types our hair is different of course mine's gonna grow but mine's gonna require a bit more tlc and yes, I'm going to buy a lot of random products until I figure it out. But that's okay. I'm saving a lot more than I would on those relaxes, those crazy gloves that cost 60 bucks. And you know, all this, like I can just maybe create my own egg mask at home and whatever it is. But it just all comes from really trying to say, who am I? Who is this little person sitting on my head and how am I going to take care of it? It's like your little baby, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> have a contribution from the audience. Anybody want to say anything? Once, twice. Wow. Great. So my, from what she was saying, in my mind, I'm like, so how do we, how do we get rid of these boxes? Is it our parents? Is it this society? How can we go against this society uh, beliefs about how we should look or how we should wear our hair? Because I believe it begins with me. It begins with you. How do we do that? How do you go about that? <laughs> well, I think the first thing is actually wearing our hair the way that we want to. Because like what you were saying, we are confined. There are these boxes where we're like, you can only have braids, or you can only have a silky hair, or if you're gonna wear your afro, you need to comb it out, and it needs to be nice and you know shapely or whatever it is. Um, but um, I think we need to break those barriers and introduce these new styles for Pete's sake. I mean, I'm looking at her hair and I'm like, I, and this is my next hairstyle. I really looked at it, I was like, you need to give me your guys' number. Like, before everyone sat down. But it's one of those things where we just need to accept the beauty of um, natural hair, what we can do with it. And I think another thing that I'm finding, very, like, people find very difficult is that people do not understand hair types. So I think it's, you need to learn your hair. She said it's like a baby, it really is. I think hair is very interesting. Um, I mean, like, it's like okay this is your hair type you know this is what you can use this is what will help it grow this is what will help it retain moisture i think we get so frustrated sometimes we're just like you know what i'm just gonna wait a week um it's not because you don't want to it's because you don't know what to do like this is uh like hair 101 we need to be educated on our own hair and i like also what she said about oppression we've been um natural hair has been ostracized so it's like ah you know natural hair you can't wear it like this and we spoke about culture and you know our fellow black women and that's what it is so um in order to learn something new you need to unlearn all these um other unhealthy habits so you can't just be like i want to learn something new but i still have this mentality it's an unlearning and learning process so like i said this is hair 101 your head is uh, a course on its own but also, don't you think there's also some hair esteem in there? Like having the confidence to actually yes. say, you know what, I'm just gonna just get out of the house looking like her. The unkempt hair, I mean like, yeah, 
I think there is a lot of um, <laughs> I don't know if most women are confident because because of this Eurocentric beauty standard that has been just thrown at at us probably from an early stage. I don't know. Is it is it is it confidence issues, ladies? Is it confidence issues? <laughs> you wanna say? When I wear my natural hair, I feel very confident. Uh, there was a time when I got a short weave for my sister. She bought one from SA office of life. I bought this actually for you because I've been seeing your hair on WhatsApp and everything. So she gave that to my hair. And then when I went home, you know, I, I removed it at midnight. <laughs> because I just couldn't. I kept on thinking about it. I'm going to go out tomorrow with this. I don't feel okay. I had to remove it. Another time she came again with another weed. When she <laughs> went out to town and she was like, I'm coming back and I'm going to put this in your head. I had to go and just go bold. Because when she came back, no, I didn't have any hair to put in. Wow. And she was like, why, 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 why would you be doing this to me? So she gave up on buying the weeds and everything. And uh, when I got to art school, that was the only place I could expect it. You would be free. They will tell you to do anything. You can even wear anything you want. But when you go back home, they will be like, serious? <laughs> Did you go like this? Because my mom used to go out to work at five. When we go to school, we go at eight. And then she wouldn't even see what I was wearing or my hair. When I came back, it would be a whole new thing. You went with this. Which one? Serious? How much did you have in the room? And don't go to my one So the thing is, you, you get this. When I watch it, I cook with Ziki Sira, and then you have a hard time thinking about, okay, what, what are they going to say and everything? That, that's gonna end. The, the other thing is, environment, you only go to Kara. And the people, the society, you only go to Kara. I think I could have been elderly women, my mom, my husband, mother, and they wouldn't even want to see anything. You know, who knows? That time you would know what I need to do. next to go to the farm. Why did Chiramelko Kauza should even give you more of that? <laughs> so it, it was a hard time, I would say, for me to even take my hair to the Buddha and I just to snuggle calm. I used to have uh, bush notes and uh, I would even uh, have a law. And she would be like, we don't want to go money and everything. And I remember this other time I wanted to go. To command her and Krona and Ajidwang and I had a vision of the Nemo home and said that you're not going like that. I will buy a wig and you are going to have to wear a wig for that whole week that you're going there. Uh, so that, you know, I was or put you know, paying her or switching it or not wanting to cheer and have a bottle of and everything. So you, you kind of like, all these people are concerned about other people's thoughts and everyone is a decision. You know, I'm 18 years and above, you're allowed to make your own decisions. But because you're still living under someone's roof, they, they, have, they, they, have, they say they have a right to tell you what to do with everything that you wear and uh, what on your head. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank Alright, so I wanted to, um, <clears throat> but before I say what I want to say, so that's my sister there with the bush looks that keeps being there with the unkept hair. So <laughs> it was, it's, 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 it's like an ongoing joke at home. Like her hair is like that. She'll go home and it'll be like that. Mine is like super soft and it's fragile. So the wind comes and then it just like shrinks. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. So I also learned something from these ladies that we all have different hair types. So I now understand why my hair is like that. Um, I just wanted to share my story. Um, I remember when I was growing up, uh, my mother wouldn't allow me to have black braids. You know the jet black, the number one? I wasn't allowed to get that. I had to get number four, because number four was the closest to our natural hair. So it, it, ha it was very strict. I remember when I was now like more into my creative space, I think around 16, I was like, I want to get blonde braids. It was taboo, like when we were growing up. Like you could not get blonde braids. And I remember the first time I got blonde braids, like heads were turning. Even in town, people would be like, oh, when they, because only certain people had blonde hair. And <clears throat> I remember my rebellion got so strong to the point where I said to myself, I'll never have anything black in my hair 
ever, ever again. Then that's when my crazy hair journey started and I started doing all these crazy colors, dyeing my hair all these crazy colors and all of that stuff. And then the, uh, I think about two months ago, I woke up and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and then I dyed my hair jet black, like, cause my natural hair is not black black. It's like a young brown that's just, you know. <laughs> So I dyed my hair jet black and the response that I got from people was, it was sad, but it was also like, okay. It was also, I, it also made me happy. So a lot of people are like, but you're not butterfly anymore. Cause we're used to the colors. That's always the same, but you're not butterfly anymore. You're not you anymore. Like we're used to the colors, go back to the colors. I'm like, no, my hair doesn't define me. And the sad truth is for the longest time my hair did define me because i would have all those crazy colors and i knew i would draw their attention and i knew everyone would be looking at me but without my hair i wasn't confident i couldn't walk up to people and be like hi my name is chagat chagat because i felt like i didn't have that you know crazy with me so this going black it's it's also like a personal journey in that i'm also saying that look my hair doesn't have to define me I can still be me, I can still be the creative person that I am with jet black hair. And yeah, it's, it's been working so far. <laughs> um, no, I was just going to add a comment about our parents' involvement and being, it being very emotional. It's a very emotional thing um, about hair and the choices that we make with our hair. And I think some of it stems from the fact that natural hair was just radicalized, you know, in the 70s, with the movements that were there. Only a certain type of person would have their hair in its natural state and wear it as an afro. And what it has then become, it's become the angry black woman uniform, right? <laughs> if you've got your, your afro out, it doesn't really matter what you say. It's going to be taken in a certain way. And I'm like, oh, so you're angry now. Oh, oh, I see the attitude. <laughs> and you could be saying the exact same thing as, you know, lady next to you with the silky hair, and she's much more palatable. Um, and people don't, you know, um, assume that she's coming to them with a specific attitude or with a, you know, a, a specific way of being. And um, I think the fact that more and more of us are wearing our hair in its natural state will hopefully, you know, remove us from that movement. What I find to be sad, though, is in media, you know, like the big shows and stuff that come out of America, you, you kind of get a glimpse of, yes, we're, we're heading in the right direction. But then if you look at it, you're like, yes, Shonda, Shonda rhymes. You know, there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But any time that she writes an ugly black woman scene, what is Viola doing? <laughs> She's got her afro. You see what I'm saying? She's got her afro. And then when it comes to the healing, you know, when she goes to see Mary J. Blige, and Mary J. Blige is talking to her in the, in the, in the hair shop, she's having a weave put in. So it kind of, that, that emotion is still there, and it's still being fed to us. And I find that such a sad thing. Um, and the other thought that I had with that as well is this concept of good hair. Because you can have someone like, you know, um, you're Kerry Washington, and we're like, no, it's fine. She can go in the shower, the hair can get curly. It's sexy, you know. But the minute Viola is, you know, crying and she's got her, her weave off, suddenly it's not so sexy. And I think that's something that we need to move away from as well. And I find quite often when people come through the door, like, no, 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 I have my Shona type hair. So you can't, you can't tell me that, you know, hair goals are a thing for me because my hair won't grow. It won't do this, it won't do that. And I think we're kind of, not only society keeping us in boxes, but we're kind of keeping ourselves in boxes as well. Um, all hair types are beautiful. And there's stuff that this type of hair can do that mine can't. I'd love to be able to do this, but it can't. So all hair types are beautiful and we have um, different options within that hair type um, and different beauties within that hair type. But I just am hoping that media properly gets there. We're ahead of the curve here. America still needs to catch up with us. I like what uh, both you and Butterfly have just ex uh, expressed um, in these last two comments. And uh, I now want to just switch it up a little bit uh, and ask, is hair not very spiritual? Is hair not a huge part of our expression? I'm picking up from where, from where Butterfly says, my hair does not define me. Doesn't our hair define us to a large extent, to, to some extent? Because I feel that um, through the seasons that I've gone through, uh, natural and not so natural, there's, there, there's a way I, I'm, that my hair demands to be worn. You understand? So in, in that, doesn't hair define you a little bit? 
and you know what they say when a woman cuts her hair she's she's um she's turned a corner yeah she's she's about to turn uh, to, to change her life in a way that no one can hold her back and you know that feeling you know even um coming back to the spiritual and, and cultural aspects you know in in shona uh way back in the days i don't think a lot of people practiced it for for a very long time that when you lose someone i i know it about uh very close uh, nuclear uh, family members when you lose your mother your father or your sibling you cut your hair you know willis watafi did that uh, after the death of his elder brother he shaved off all his hair and you know he's only regrowing it now doesn't that sort of emotionally connect to what you're going through and isn't that a form of identifying you and and expressing what you're going through emotionally um i really do like what you said about the spirit spirituality sorry linked to hair because um also tying i it must as much as it might sound like a contradiction you kind of said the same thing when she's like my hair doesn't define me but it is spiritual because the thing is by means of definition a lot of people think that people are very one-dimensional that this is how you are this is how you'll only be this is how we know you so the second you change they're like ah, oh that's not butterfly anymore your hair is black but you're allowed to you're allowed to go through phases in life and if your hair is going to be part of that transformation, let it be. And I think it's true, because um, now you are like, oh, I want to regrow my hair. And you're allowed to. No, they can't be like, ah, no, we're used to the bald head. You can only have that, because that's how we know you. You are like, personally, I want to have hair again. And that is your choice. And that's how life is. I don't, if we were the same person, we'd be the most shallow people ever. We'd be boring. If humans stayed the same throughout life, if you didn't go through any kind of changes, that would be worrying. I think if my friend came to me and was the same person every year, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I need a new friend. Like, I can't just deal with you. But it's, it's good for you to go through changes. Be it good, be it bad. We're humans. And I think sometimes our hardships do shape us, and also the good things do shape us. And that's what creates our character. I remember um, I went through a breakup and I cut my hair and I was like to my friends, guys, I cut my hair. And they were like, what? I was like, yeah, I love it. And I love it. I remember like my ex told me, he's like, are you okay? And I was like, you know what? I don't have you. So th I am fantastic. I am great. Like I cut my hair and he would look at me and he didn't even know who I was. And I was like, you know what? I just felt free because even when he he would be like oh no, i think you should wear a weave oh no and he would be like okay um i'm just gonna send you to the salon and i was like no, no no i don't he's like i'm gonna send you to the salon and i was like you know what let me do what i've been wanting to do because he's like oh no if you cut your hair you're gonna look a bit manly and i was like look here i think i'm still pretty like if i look manly whoever likes my man face is deserving of it <laughs> so yeah hair is spiritual and i think that we should just embrace it just embrace it whatever phase it is during your life if you change your hair six times during the year if it falls out because you've done too much in you know what i just want to highlight something here. you know i've been so scared to actually shave my hair ever since i was there i only cut off the ends and i don't want to i don't want to cut off the ends i don't want to all of it because i'll start again and you know i don't know how it look like when I cut. so that kind of heat will be very short i feel like i would have taken something that i oh my god sorry <laughs> Because I feel like I would have taken something that was a part of me. So I think, yeah, it is spiritual. Um, there have been so many questions that I've been picking up and keeping in my pocket that you've been asking. So um, I think one of them was, is it a confidence thing? Do you have the confidence to wear your hair naturally? And I believe that all women have the confidence to wear their hair naturally. Um, I think what it then becomes is the influence of others that diminishes your confidence. Uh, like the way you were saying that you love to wear your hair natural. You love what it does. You do a mohawk, you do bush locks, you, and you went to a place where you were made to feel like it was okay. It's fine for you to express yourself in the way you want to through the way you wear your hair. Um, but I'm sure if you, if, uh, if you weren't as much of a resilient person when your sister started coming with the weaves when she started coming with the, all these things like wear this wear that you would have started to feel like are you trying to say that my hair is not good enough that i am not good enough when i wear my natural hair and i think 
for the people who do not have the confidence to wear their hair naturally because i know it happens so often that other women will come and they'll be like oh, okay fine you tied your hair in a bun i really wish i could do that oh you wore your hair naturally uh you wore your hair natural i really wish i could do that but i'm not sure and i think everyone has a confidence but it then becomes what are people going to say about the way that i wear my hair um natural hair are they are they gonna be like oh, okay uh she she didn't wear her hair the way she usually does she didn't have the pink hair uh she didn't wear the weave or the wig that she usually has usually has um she is now growing her hair she's not doing the bald thing anymore is something going on with her she's not the her that we used to know and i think that lack of confidence comes from the way other people make you feel about your choice to wear the to wear your hair the way you want to wear it and um, I think that lack of confidence also comes from people imposing I think the way you wear your hair is such a natural choice uh, sorry such a personal choice I'm very sorry it's a very personal choice so if I decide that you know what today I'm gonna take this bun out and I'm gonna like just wash my hair and let it dry air dry and then it's going to shrink and do what it likes um for someone to then come and be like wow you know that that's very different uh does it not look good no it looks okay but you know you know people say that all the time and they don't want to say i i think it's more of a thing that people impose their personal choices so if you prefer to see someone in a weave or you prefer to see someone in their natural hair you're probably gonna be like yeah you know i like that but uh sorry is uh, a lot better and i think now it becomes people imposing their personal choices or their personal preferences um i know we're friends and she'll she she has a propensity to change her hair all the time um and you know when she does something i'll be like it's definitely not like what you had before but this this looks amazing um so i i think i think that confidence factor comes from it's definitely an external influence what people are going to say the same way that you were saying i'm not sure what i'll look like and um like what she was saying about her ex-boyfriend that he was like uh you'll look like a man <laughs> with my feminine body with my breasts <laughs> with my hips with the way that i'm a woman how am i gonna look like a man you know i think it's people imposing their personal preferences their personal choices about how you wear your hair on you and also the other thing just yeah uh, the other thing about uh, the other thing about um, how we wear our hair there's also been this misconception about like especially in us creatives when we wear our hair in a certain way locks or whatever we um we are bound to be associated uh, with the rainbow nation most of the times even if you are not i've actually seen that happening like if you choose to go bald if you choose to go like have locks like her or mohawk and can i tell you something about the mohawk actually in namibia they, they, they used to make boys cut off their hair into a mohawk to show that they are virgins. And uh, with girls, they had to also like shave their hair, like all of it in Senegal. I'm telling you, serious. <laughs> We're going to get into the history and the symbolism of that. But anyway, no, it's all good. <laughs> we are in the new generation now. I mean, things are changing. But anyway, yeah, you can take over it, Ayati. All right. So the more we, we, we carry on with this uh, uh, discussion, the more I realize that maybe what we are struggling with as a society is how to be um how to relate to each other as one like how do we keep a sense of belonging and yet look so individual look so different because um uh, uh, the lady with the hat was talking about how her mother would say these things you know when you go and see your father's family these are the, 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 the misconceptions or these are the perceptions it's about managing perceptions really so i think what we are struggling with i'm trying to think about um i i know a friend who's who's, who's about to have a baby and she's already she's already having a fit about uh, her mother-in-law cutting her daughter's hair who's not even born so that's another aspect coming back to the spirituality and the, the cultural aspect where a, a, your mother or your mother-in-law will say 
there's a certain cultural way of treating her and looking at her. So I think from that coming forward to our generation and obviously to the younger and to our own offspring, the issue is how does my mother look like my mother with however she wears her hair and then I as the second generation look whichever way I, I do and what am I going to do with my daughter and my son. And my son. Let's not forget uh, the, the men in this in this whole conversation. So I think that's where we are right now. Where, by virtue of time and how far we've moved with civilization and and modernization, and you know just open mindedness, how do we remain uh, for 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 uh, you know for for in context here? How do we remain Zimbabwean? You know how do we remain? But mwagadai. Like, what, what, what unifies us and yet we want to be individual I think we are coming to that point where in our, in our socialization individuality is, 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 is coming to the fore but at the same time we want to keep those core values where you know Ubuntu, Unuedu, Pachiwanuchedu you know how we are I think that's where the struggle is really beginning to, 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 to be and it, it's how we we it's how we negotiate that space. Um, I just want to—I I really love how you brought up men, also, because as much as yes, we're talking about women, men have hair. Um, just a funny example: um, my nephew, I think he's about three. He, his mom has never cut his hair, so his hair's long. I don't know my pigtails, or like you know the two there with the one at the back, and goodness me, some of the criticism that has come out. You know, they never say the word. They're like, you know, black mothers never want to say the word. They always, they always do the weird thing where the head goes to the side and they do the, and that's what it is. There's a criticism because that is our culture. We don't want to believe that. Um, a, a man can keep his hair yesterday i was i think i was in town and i was like i'm so sorry ladies but i was like men have the most beautiful dreadlocks i look at guys dreadlocks and i'm like man if i could have a hair that looked like that and um another thing that i really love that you said was that you know the whole spirit of ubuntu there's this thing where we're so segregated as zimbabweans and that, that's what makes it easier for you to be um to easily judge somebody um, our culture is unified to some point, but um, I really feel like if you look at our history, there's never been a part where we've been really joined. It's always been like, um, you know, Makaranga, it's, and it's very divided. But it's like, I think I'm looking at us now, I don't know what it is, I think we're so hungry for that unity be it our actual literal political situation that has pushed us into that space. But I have seen that amongst us, like very young people, and, and amongst the youth, there is some sort of um, unity that is coming into play. And I think, like I said, you know, here is a literal course, it's already education in Vuzi, that um, we need to introduce. Um, I, I remember as well, um, a cousin of mine, she had her daughter's hair relaxed by the grandmother. And she said that she's, she's going to private school. She can't have her afro out. And my cousin was like, excuse, she was like, excuse me? How dare you? And it's that thing of educating. And she taught her daughter that you can wear your hair naturally. And she loves it. She, will, she knows how to, she's now in grade seven. And she'll just tie the little, you know, the, the afro puff. That's what she does. And it starts with us educating one another that it's okay. Um, there's no, like, there's nothing like, this is good hair. Unfortunately, um, Jen is gone now. But I would have loved to talk more on that because she has a salon that deals with different kinds of hair. But there's nothing like good hair. If your hair looks like that, I can't be like, ah, now I want my hair to be chestnut brown and blow with the wind like butterflies. My hair will be like this cement it will not move with the wind but you know <laughs> exactly hers does and it's that thing of just accepting like wow like i was looking at her hair and i was like man i should have cut my hair because that's exactly what my hair used to be like but you know it's that thing of just educating one another and accepting it because we are the only ones who we can only write our own history 
and we should now be like okay you know what it's 2018 so like next year someone can be like man it's 2019 you can't tell me not to wear my apple at work that's what it is we need to make it acceptable i don't think yes we can have our talks but talking is easy it's the actual actions um so doing it sometimes that you need to force people to accept that this is fine and i think you know um i was also laughing when jen gave the example of you know like you know in movies or like the american movie narrative it's true um i studied media i remember i used to watch movies and i'd, be, I'd get so I'd, I'd cringe i'd be like ooh, like if you look at the color purple or django you know the the good slaves with the straight hair and whatever you know the light skinned ones they'd be in the house then him the mad kinky they, they would be in the fields picking cotton and as much as we're like oh movie this is actually our history and we need to accept that this is how things have been we are the only ones as black people we can only turn around wh what things sh should be like or what we want it to be like um but yeah wow <laughs> thank you so much are you guys excited yeah. <laughs> are you enjoying this conversation yeah. have you learned something new today Oh wow, that's great. Anyway, uh, Jenny had to excuse us because she's another at, at, um, function to actually attend. But right about now, guys, I think you guys are feeling a little bit sleepy. We need to just do our motto and close out this conversation. Another conversation that's coming up uh, is about body positivity and I'm pretty sure you don't want to miss that one. And um, it's going to be here, so you have to stick around. So again, the motto before our panelists give us like the last word on um, embracing who we are. I think it's the main thing that has been highlighted by these amazing panelists is that we need to accept ourselves as who we are and we need to just accept our hair as it is. So the motto again, women rise. Yeah, no, guys, look at the panelists. They've got so much energy and you guys don't have the energy. I mean, okay. You just forgot the word. Yeah. 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 I forgot what the word is. Women rise. Yeah. Yeah. Women share experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Women embrace who they are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, the clear fans for yourselves, guys. Anyway, ladies, I, I would like you to just share a bit of a message on how to, the power, what's the power, the power in embracing your naturalness, your natural hair. Like you, Butterfly, you've just, you, you've always struck me as a person who's really bold. The hairstyles that you actually put out there on social media and everything, I mean, it's so amazing. Even Ayati, you going bald, it was like, wow. <laughs> if she can do that, I mean, share the power. What is the power? What, 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 power, what, um, what is the power that comes with that? Okay, so to be very honest, um, I, I didn't know this, but I then later found out in life that the reason why I had such a loud, like my hair was so loud, like green and blue and pink and all those colors, was because I was actually very insecure. Like, I didn't believe that people would accept me for who I was, like just the, the person inside of me. Like, naturally, I'm a very, like, shy person. I, I used to. Now I'm just, like, out there, like, listen, this is what you get. But I used to be, like, a very shy person. And it was such a contradiction because people look at my hair like, this girl must be so confident. Even when I went to Big Brother, like, everyone was expecting me to be like this. Ah! And then I'm there, like, yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, that that's who I was. So I guess uh, for the longest time, I always used my hair as... You know, I have a and then they'll be like, they'll be okay. They'll be like, ah, this girl's crazy. She's whatever. Then I realized that I wasn't being the person that my hair said I was. Well, you know, that creative, that person who's not afraid to take those very risky, because I did some risky stuff with my hair. So I think in this whole, um, th this, this year, and even th in the past few months where I changed my hair, I also learned a lot of things. As much as I said earlier that my hair doesn't define me, I learned that my hair is an extension of who I am. It's another part of me. It's another side of me. And I need to embrace that. You know, people know me for my hair to some degree. So I need to also embrace that. I shouldn't let it define me, but I should embrace it as a part of me. And that's what I've learned. And I also learned a lot of things today. Yes, so thank you, ladies. And thank you, everyone else who was listening and also contributed. Um, I really believe that um, I'll speak for myself but in a, in a generalization sort of manner and I hope I don't offend anyone but from from my experience of, a, of being a Zimbabwean woman a Shona woman 
I feel that our socialization and our upbringing has been very, um, it makes us uh, see things from a very collective point of view. There's this safety in numbers, the, the us, and I think for me that has been oversold. That has been oversold and has killed individualist, individualism and has killed, uh, uh, you know, that genuine, authentic aspect of individual. I mean, we are so individual. We are so individual. I mean, our, our fingerprints don't match. Nobody else out of 7 billion people, it will never match anybody else's. So a God that can be so particular with creating you doesn't want you to be like the next person please for goodness sake let's stop this tino tino that is so yeah even our children are called tino this tino that tino that tino 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 you know because tino you know we're always speaking in plural we are always speaking in plural while i i, I appreciate the oneness and the social uh, um, arrangement of, of 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 my background i really really find that it's repressive in a lot of ways you know i find it so so repressive and i think what will move this country forward what will move our race forward what will move us as a people forward is embracing that uniqueness in each and every one of us we've got different shoe sizes even when we do wear the same shoe size who is a different uh, a foot shape from you when you wear it it won't fit you can't you don't step the same way you in and get we are so individual and the word of god that i believe in says i knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb i mean it doesn't get any more individual than that so i don't know why we waste so much time our whole lives trying to conform conformity is so overrated in, in my view we are always trying to conform there are always these rules these boxes be like this be like that we are just who we are and it's okay for me if we can learn to embrace that if we can begin to teach our children that to talk to each other like that look at depth who is different and actually understand and see the diversity you know um i'm very fortunate that out of four siblings uh complex and wise i'm the only one who is like this my sister is as as as, as dark as um uh, Yatina here next to me. So when I look at my sister talk and, and express herself and laugh, and it's so fascinating to me because her skin, like, I'm only fascinated. Like, how is this my mother's child? And you know, I, I, I see it in my in my nieces now. They look at me like, why is she the only one like this? So for me, maybe because of that uh, that that that, that um, background, it has always come naturally to always think for myself independently and this is my biggest wish for the zimbabwean woman because a lot of times it's you know it's just we just do all these stereotypes and you know like everybody does the same thing the same ways or is aspiring to do like it's such a waste of creativity. I think God looks at it, looks down on us and says, maybe we run out. You understand? Because if we express ourselves as individuals, the, the, the amount of color, the liveliness that would come out of our lives, the amount of information we share and exchange and just be enriched by each other and, and you know, just marvel at each other would be so amazing. Because now why we judge each other so much is because we are all trying to conform and put ourselves in these little boxes. And it's frustrating. It's such a draining life. If we could just free, somebody free spirit that you to express, I think we'd have so much more joy. And I think that would be my final way to say, you know what, just do you. Just do you. Whenever you make that choice, whenever you're expressing that season that you are in, through your day, through your clothes, even my chila child, don't you have days where you say, today I want to wear cotton? In the cotton Or a, 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 a flare dress, you know, a line. Even clothes, shoes, there's a day you want open toes, there's a day you want to wear tennis, there's a way you want to wear the day you want to wear heels. Because it's all part of expression and that's how I see this whole hair thing. It's just part of the individual expression because God gave it to us for for this life 
to be friends and I give I, I, I came to give them not only life but life in abundance. That's the abundance. That's the abundance of, of it that we are trying so hard to confirm and diminishing this, this experience. Because we say life is short, but we're shortening it even further by trying so hard to wear blue all your days when you should experience all your colours. <laughs> thank right. you. Yeah, I'm thank sure you, you so get much. it. <laughs> we'll left the minute. <laughs> okay, I I I really would like to um, express the sentiment she did. I think people do as as much as we encourage diversity we have a problem accepting it so when everyone is going this way and you get someone else who's like you know what i'm curious about what's that way you know everyone ends up like but everyone's going this way she knows what i say you know how are people gonna view you how are, if you reach problems and you're by yourself how are you gonna i think we like you were saying we we have this uh, mindset of safety in numbers and I know that it's not just with hair, it's about expressing yourself in different ways, you know. If something happens to someone you're close to, they might express their anger in a very different way. But you know, you might be like, why aren't you angry? If I were you, I would be, I would, I would be shouting, I would be, I would be so mad, you know. But we don't express ourselves in the same way. We will never be the same. We're such different people. So it, it only makes sense that our choices of hair, our choices in the way that we dress would be different. And uh, I think we just need to stop saying that we Ex that we we can express our diversity and we'll accept it. I think we really s need to start actually doing it. We need to start accepting diversity. And it's not just in the movement for natural hair. I know that there are even some naturals who will look down upon people who relax their hair and be like, well, why aren't you natural? Like, are you still feeling insecure about the kinks in your hair? And you know, they'll speak in a very condescending way. So I think, um, the way in which to understand each other better is to accept that your decision won't be the same as my decision and that's okay you're going to choose something chili very different you're going to choose to do your hair in a very different way you might choose natural you might choose braids kusheva kurukwa weave and that's okay that's that's one of the wonderful ways in which we're diverse sorry i know that we're out of time all right, yeah. but I just have 30 seconds. I'll twist in this whole sentence. So basically, um, when we got here, um, I was with my friend in the car, and then she like parked far away. I'm like, oh my god, we're gonna be judged walking there. And then I was like, you know what? It's fine. I was like, because I okay, I, I will say another thing that I have. I have anxiety. So like when people look, I'm like, I need a turtle shell. So I feel like that's how we feel about a lot of things in life, not just looking at how we dress, but just how we express ourselves. So it's one of those things that no matter how people are going to look at you, no matter the questions they have, just be you. And I think the ladies have basically said everything that I wanted to say. So just be you. Thank you so much, guys. A round of applause. Thank you so much for coming through. You can stay for another um, epic, amazing conversation that's going to be happening. It's body positivity. I think this one, women, there's a lot to learn about our bodies. You need to stay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.